Hi, this is Sifu Fiore. I'm just here with some education. In the news every day we read and hear about Islam, we hear about Christianity, we hear about Judaism. <clears throat> but how much do people actually know about Islam, Christianity, or Judaism? So, with the help of one of my dear friends, whom I've known a long time and I've studied with, I would like to thank him for, I consulted with him. He is a pillar of his community, um, both for black folks and for uh, Muslims. I trained with him in martial arts, and he's also a great martial artist. So thank you, Mumin Siddiq Abdur Ramin. Um, First, I would highly recommend reading the Quran. Um, I'm sure you're not going to be able to get it and learn Arabic that quickly. Um, but get a good interpretation. Read the Quran. And then there's the Bible. There's the Old Testament, which is called the Torah, and the New Testament. The Christians use. When I say Christians, I mean Orthodox Christians. I am not talking about Christians that... Um, do terrible things. <clears throat> so also part of this process is knowing the history. So this is a history of Rome, the history of the Jews, a lot of it, uh, and Rome, uh, and how they were dispersed in the diaspora, the burning of the temple by the Romans, and the prophecies that, the prof that Jesus Christ made about the temple's fall. <clears throat> Pontius Pilate, this is an excellent book because it really gives a good picture of what times were like when Christ was walking the earth. And this is a pretty thorough history of Christianity. Recommend reading that. So now on to the other part of learning about other cultures before making um, remarks that are false and hateful. I highly recommend everybody learn Hebrew, and if you don't know English, that's a good language to know, and Arabic. These are both, and actually in Sanskrit, are considered the languages that God gave us through the angels. So I've been studying Hebrew and Arabic for a while now. I would also recommend Latin and Greek, because that's what the New Testament was written in. So now we get to another important part, like I was talking about, for Christianity and Judaism. I have a lot of good books on the Middle East, and my good friend recommended a fantastic website to visit. It's um, Ibn Kathir, in the History of Islam. It's a three-volume set. He gives a good, uh, lot of talks on his website. And his website is abdurrahman.org. That's A-B-D-U-R-R-A-H-M-A-N.org. He has an extensive reading list about Islam. I just have a small one here that is um, written for uh, good purposes of education and history. So here we have... Uh, New History of the Civilizations, which I found very fascinating about the blending of old cultures with new and the similarities. History of Western philosophy is important to read. Bertrand Russell was a, a very good philosopher in his time. He was not a believer, and he used to debate G.K. Chesterton a lot in debates, but he was a, he was a good guy, smart. This man I greatly admire. His name is Robert Fisk. He is a journalist. He's covered the Middle East for his entire journalistic career of almost 40 years. He has a section on every country in the Arab world, including Iran. A lot of people might not know this, but read Bob Fisk's book. You'll see in Iran, in the mid-1950s, they had a democratic election. The Ayatollah Khomeini was democratically elected. The CIA from the United States had a coup and overturned the election and installed the Shah of Iran, who we know how that ended up. He was deposed from the revolution in 1979, and our relations with Iran have been strained ever since. Um, 
This is a good book. It's called The Hour of Mind by Raphael Patai. And it's not just a it's about the peoples of the sand in the Middle East and a general overview of um, how they're raised, um, their thought processes. And, you know, it's true about people that we speak different languages. Our minds uh, learn a little differently and see things a little differently. And then there's the whole cultural thing. And this is also a good history of the Arab peoples by Albert Khulani. It's, it's, it's pretty comprehensive, and it'll help educate you about all these books together. God's Crucible, this is an important period of time. This is pre-Islamic to 1215. Um, and Europe really was shaped, and the Middle East really was shaped by Europe. And here is the last book, and I'm going to recommend this. If you don't read anything else, read this book. I'll tell you why. Everybody is blaming this administration, that administration, <laughs> for the problems in the Middle East. They started after World War I. <clears throat> in 1979, in Versailles, the Germans had lost World War I. <clears throat> the war was really about oil in the Middle East, because at the beginning of the 20th century, um, we saw that we were going to be using it, needing it. At that time, the peoples of the Middle East, they hadn't developed um, technologies. They really didn't care. They were happy living the way they were. So these guys came, Americans, and um, from Versailles, they split up. They divided. <laughs> they divided all the countries as if it were, they were their countries. And they came in and built that infrastructure to collect the oil and just gave, installed the, uh, I believe, the Fasal family. So we had uh, America, Great Britain, and France probably taking up most of the uh, imperialism of that time. At that point, a lot of uh, work was stolen, and etc. But the stage was really set after Versailles, and people were treated like this wasn't their home or belongings. And I don't know how anybody here would feel, but I'm sure you wouldn't be too pleased if that happened to you. So I do agree that we should probably get out of the Middle East. And we have plenty of oil resources here, and just leave those people be and let them alone. Um, as far as the threats of, uh, these threats that are perceived about Islam, most Muslims do not want war, they don't want to blow anything up, they just want to do the job and be left in peace. The thing is, they have old-fashioned values that the West has lost a long time ago. They do not like seeing... Um, the things that I think most people that have a modest nature would find questionable. Behaviors, um, pornography, all of that. Um, these things have poisoned our society, and I can't argue about that. Nobody wants to blow anybody up because of it. Um, the people that I know, like Mumin, he knows on the day of judgment, you're going to get judged. 